Thank you all for joining us here at I-80 Sports, where today we are previewing the World Junior Tournament this December, and it is currently December, and we'll also give you some news and notes around the NHL. Guys, thank you all again for joining us here at I-80 Sports. Meanwhile, I'm a mess today, just smashing into my pop filter while I do this, but it's all good. Thank you all for joining us here again at I-80 Sports. If you are joining us somewhere else other than YouTube, make sure you follow us down below, youtube.com slash I-80 Sports. While you're there, hit the bell notification and hit subscribe so that way you know when we go live. We tend to do these live, but... I don't know. This month it's just been a record type of month with the hustle and bustle of the holiday season. And hey, we do have a website, iadsports.com. Speaking of the holiday season, if you're looking for that last minute gift, hit up our shop, get yourself a t-shirt as low as $8. But while you're here on YouTube, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification. If you like our video, hit the like button and also comment down below with what you're looking forward to most in the World Junior Tournament. And if you're on Twitter, make sure you follow us down below at I80 underscore sports NHL. And if you follow us already, thank you guys so much because we greatly value all of your support. I'm Brian. He's Tom. Tom, how are you doing today? Doing well, doing well. And here we are. One of my favorite times of the hockey year, the World Juniors. Um, Really, this is hockey's version of the CFB playoff, the March Madness of college basketball. Reason being is because hockey players come from all all sorts of different developmental systems, whether it be major junior hockey up in Canada, NCAA hockey here in the United States, or just playing pros over in Europe because you can turn professional in Europe, I believe, at age 16. So it's it's this really shows who the best players are who the best players are coming up. Obviously, it's a little bit different than the college rules because this is only for players 20 years or younger, which, as we have seen lately with a lot of NCAA guys, if you're drafted high enough and you're elite enough, a lot of guys are jumping are jumping from the NCAA at age 20 to go to the NHL anyway. A lot of them stay for uh, their freshman and sophomore years with their NCAA schools, and then they'll jump over. Uh, prime example right now, not to be a homer, K. Andre Miller. One of them in my mind. So I'm just looking forward to it. I look forward to it every year. Uh, Canada is hosting it yet again. And we'll get a little more into it later on. Yeah, it's a great time of the year. As Andy Williams once said, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Yes, the World Junior Tournament is back. And it's going to be a ton of fun. A lot that we got to cover there. But before we get into that, let's talk about some small news notes from around the NHL this week. Let's hit up the traffic report. The I-80 Sports Traffic Report, where you can find all your news and notes from the week. Hey, my last name is Singer, so I got to sing anyway, so that's my <laughs> any chance I could get. There but you go. As you guys well know, our traffic report is to talk about our NHL news and notes around the NHL this week. Am I good right now? Am I having a stroke? What's going on here with my speech today? Jesus. Yeah, you're oh, fine, man. man. You're fine. It's 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 oh, a great no, it's man. a great those couple days before uh, Christmas. Everybody's everybody's in la la land. Exactly. We're all just on that holiday high, I guess, right now. But we had a pretty light news week around the NHL this week. But we got a couple things that we got to cover real quick. So let's hit up the injury report real quick. We got one major injury to talk about here. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers forward Cam Atkinson is getting neck surgery. And he is going to miss the remainder of this NHL season. I know. I mean, the Flyers are a contender right now. You would hate for Cam Atkinson to really miss out on the action, right? No, no, he he's rightfully getting neck surgery. He needs that. This Flyers team is a mess right now. And even Flyers teams can attest to that one. Probably the only thing not a mess is Carter Hart right now, who is on an absolute heater at the moment. Uh, so he's there. We also have something unspecified with stars forward uh, Dennis Gurionov. He is going to be taking an indefinite leave of absence for personal reasons. I don't have any of the details on that one. 
But all I would say as just a reporter on this one, please respect people's privacy during this time. Don't pry, especially if it is something that is a sensitive topic. Um, but Dennis Gurionov on an indefinite leave. Cam Atkinson uh, going away with neck surgery. Tom, which of these two uh, circumstances is more significant for their team? I'd say Gurionov. The Flyers right now are a dumpster fire. They're sitting there. Best, they're healthy scratch and their best forward. I'm not saying a lot of Kevin Hayes is your best forward. Their coaches are being ridiculous because that's just what John Tortorella does. And I just wonder if this was all a ploy to bring Tortorella in to make the team so bad that they would get Connor Bedard and then they fire him the minute they draft him. It'd be funny if that happens, if if they do get the number one pick overall. But, yeah, definitely Dennis Garianoff. Um, Dallas is having a nice little year over there. Um, but like I said a few weeks ago, Dallas needs to keep pace in that division right now. Colorado is getting healthy. And Colorado is also finding ways to win games with almost a damn near AHL lineup. So they really do need to keep pace. And this might be a little bit of a loss for the Stars. I mean, it's not like they're losing Jason Robertson or Rupe Hintz, but it's still a little bit of a loss. Yeah, it's still a little bit of a loss. It does seem like Dennis Gurionov has been playing uh, somewhat distracted this year. Uh, from what I was just reading up now uh, with potentially why he's going to be on a leave of absence, it could seem like government meddling over in Russia, possibly threats towards his family. So I'm curious as to what comments Gurionov made against the Russian government. Obviously, NHL players making comments against the Russian government and you know, immediately suffering repercussions is no stranger to us. We saw this as mm -hmm. recently as two years ago with our Temi Panarin. Uh, so it seems like we could have some similar uh, distractions going on here for Dennis Gurionov. In 25 games played this season so far, he's got two goals, three assists for five points on the season. Uh, only about 13 minutes of average ice time per night. I know he's a better player, player than this. I mean, this is still significant for the Dallas Stars. He's a bottom six contributor on this team. Now, in Cam Atkinson's case, uh, what the Flyers really miss on is veteran leadership in that locker room. Uh, that's the biggest thing that they're missing right now. But it should be noted that Cam Atkinson has been absent all season so far with this next surgery though he's been a locker room voice and been present in the locker room and been present for being a voice in this new regime. He has not played a single game this season and he will continue to not play a single game this season. Now last season in 73 games with the Philadelphia Flyers, his first season as a Philadelphia flyer, uh, he scored 23 goals with 27 assists, 50 points in 73 games. So you are going to be missing some top six production from Cam Atkinson for the remainder of the season. But if it means that he comes out the other side, able to play at age, age 34 for the Flyers, that could be great uh, for the Philadelphia Flyers next year and a really big acquisition for them next year. But we wish Cam Atkinson all the best in his recovery from neck surgery. Hopefully everything goes smoothly and silky. And with Dennis Karyanov, hopefully all the distractions go away so that way he can focus on his playing career uh, with the Dallas Stars. Moving on from our injury report, we do have one or two quick hits that we do have to just touch on real quick before we move on from them. Um, number one, the Toronto Maple Leafs have acquired Dryden Hunt in a trade with the Colorado Avalanche in exchange for Dennis Malgin. So I think it's a win-win for both teams here. Avs get a uh, potential fourth-line guy in Dennis Malgin, and uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs get some defensive help with Dryden Hunt. Uh, San Jose Sharks forward Tomas Hurtel uh, has been suspended two games for a pretty bad high-sticking call. And lastly, the Edmonton Oilers have re-signed their current starting goaltender, Stuart, Stuart Skinner, to a three-year contract extension. I believe it's for roughly $3 million, like north of $3 million a year, if I'm not mistaken. I'll go and look that up while we talk about World Juniors. But yeah, some interesting small little news bits around the NHL uh, going into our holiday season. Maybe we have a couple bigger news pieces to talk about next week, but pretty small. So right now, we're going to hop on over to the World Junior Tournament. It's time to pump the brakes. Not so fast. It's time to pump the brakes. 
as I said before, it's the most wonderful time of the year. No, I'm not going to sing again. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but it's time to talk about some World Juniors. And this is actually the restart that we should mention. I believe this is the restart. No, this is not the restart. This is a whole new tournament. Oh, the restart yeah, was yeah, done. I forgot. The restart was in August. Now this it was is the Edmonton over the summertime. Year. Yep, this is the genuine tournament, and we've got some interesting names that we got to talk about. We got some interesting teams that we have to talk about in this as well. We're gonna start real quick with just breaking down the bracket on either side. Tom, I'm gonna give you the floor on this one. Give us a lowdown on what the bracket looks like for the quarterfinals. Well, there are no quarterfinals yet. We still have to have preliminary rounds still. So we That's have. We have preliminary rounds. It's the group. The tournament consists of 10 teams in two groups. Group A will be held. The games will be held in Halifax because they have a bigger arena there. So guess who plays in that bigger arena? Guess who gets to play all their games there? Team Canada, along with Team Sweden, along with Czechia, Germany, and Austria at the Scotiabank Center, home of the Halifax Mooseheads, where Nathan McKinnon played his junior hockey. Now, Group B will be held in Moncton, New Brunswick. First time they've ever done this here. And just let me say, I love that. I love when they do them in the smaller areas. Like I remember watching back in 2010 when they had the uh, when they had them in uh, Saskatoon, and the place would go nuts. No disrespect to places like Vancouver or Toronto or Montreal or Edmonton, but I love when uh, when Canada decides to go to maybe a smaller city or a smaller market where you would normally think they wouldn't go. I love when they do this. So. Group B will be in Moncton. And surprise, surprise, guess who's going to play all their games in Moncton? Team USA, along with Team Finland, along with Team Switzerland, along with Team Slovakia, and Team Latvia. Um, just a disclaimer here, Russia will not be participating for obvious reasons. Um, like always, the U.S. and Finland get an easy group, and that's supposedly to uh, leave them vulnerable for the quarterfinals. We shall see what happens with this. Um, hasn't started yet. So we got to see how the games play out and the games will start on Boxing Day. That will be Monday, December 26th. A lot of us have the day off. Some of us don't. I have it off. If you have it off, I suggest you check it out. It's on NHL Network here in the States. I suggest you check the games out, man. It's a, it's, it's a fun watch. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And Team USA is shaping up to be pretty interesting this year. Interesting also because there are two pretty fun and interesting Devils prospects to keep an eye on in this tournament. We'll get back to that in a little bit, though, uh, when we talk about some players to watch in this tournament. But before we talk about uh, players to watch in this tournament, let's talk about some of the teams that are competing in this tournament here. Tom, I'm going to turn the floor over to you on this one. I'll let you start with this one. Uh, who do you feel like is the team to beat in this tournament this year? And why do you think it's Team Canada? Hometown team. You have who was supposed to be the number one overall last year, but he wasn't as a team captain. Shane Wright, I thought, should have played. Shane Wright played in the first one last year. He didn't play in the restart. I feel like he should have played, but he didn't. You also have Connor Bedard. You have Rangers prospect Brent, Brennan Othman. I don't know if this year's Team Canada is maybe as stacked as they were in the past, but I still feel like they're the team to be. I still feel like far and away – they're better than anybody else. Canada has a tendency to do this where they'll call in a player who's in the NHL but still eligible for the tournament to lead the team. They did it with Ryan Nugent Hopkins about 10 years ago. You see, they did it with Anthony Duclair back in 2015. It's not unheard of for Canada to do this. It really is not. Um, so I really do think they are the team to beat. I just want to pull up their roster real quick, if you guys don't mind. Just uh, let me you ramble. You have it pulled up if you need it. No, no, no. I have it here. I have the link to it. Um, here it is. Because Wikipedia right now, my world-class research, is only letting me see a couple of teams. But, you know, I just look up and down. You have Brant Clark playing for Canada. Was a uh, L.A. Kings draft pick. Brennan Othman, as I had as I had mentioned before. Logan Stankov and Dylan Gunther. Shane Wright. Connor Bedard, obviously. Colton Dock. Uh, Adam Fantilli. And Adam Fantilli may very well go number two in this year's draft because we don't know what's happening with Matt Vay Mitchkoff right now. We have no idea. So you may technically have the projected number one and number two draft picks playing for Team Canada and getting a decent amount of ice time. Because remember the year it was Lafreniere and Byfield were both on the team. Byfield barely played. Lafreniere dominated, but Byfield barely played. So I just look up and down at Team Canada right now, and I do think they're the team to beat. But can they be beaten? I believe so. Yeah, they can. Can they be upset? 
Yeah, they can. But I think what everyone learned after the one in Edmonton back in uh, 2020, like I just said, just to sum up what I said, I really do think Canada is the team to beat. And basically, they do want them, obviously, to face a little adversity in the group stage because, as we saw back in 2020 in Edmonton, they ran everybody over until they ran into the U.S. and couldn't even score a goal on them in a gold medal game. But right now, it's like any, like many other world juniors, Team Canada, their home ice, smaller home, smaller arenas, smaller cities, and that maybe makes that home ice, like I had mentioned before, even more of an advantage. Yeah, I mean, Canada absolutely is going to be a team to beat. And one big reason why I think Team Canada could be a team to beat, you look at the number of returning players in the tournament that they have between Connor Bedard, Nathan Goucher, Brennan Ottman, uh, Jeremy Roy, Logan Stankoven. You know, they have a really good balance of players that are returning versus also players that are playing in their very first tournament. And then players that are playing in their very first tournament world juniors tournament are no slouches either you look at this projected top line for team canada this year brennan ottman shane wright connor bedard and then that second line of adam fantili logan stankoven and dylan gunther it's a really stacked top two lines and top six for the team canada and the defense isn't slouching either highlighted by brant clark on this uh, defensive front for Team Canada. I don't know if this is as stacked as Canada has been in the past half a decade, but it they're still absolutely a team to beat. Don't sleep on Team USA, though, I will say. Do not sleep on Team USA just looking at their projected lineup. They have a good balance of uh, returning players as well, including Sean Barron, Logan Cooley, Luke Hughes, who just recently was named team captain of the Team USA, uh, and a cast and crew of others that are making their return as well, as well as other players that are going to be making their World Juniors debut. But again, no slouches. Top line currently projects to be Cutter Gauthier, Logan Cooley, and Jimmy uh, Snuggerud. And then you look at the uh, second line, Rutger McGrody, Chaz Lucius, and Jackson Blake. That's a pretty solid top six for Team USA. And you look down at the defense, and it just gets better with Luke Hughes uh, highlighted at the top of that projected lineup. And then looking further down, Lane Hudson is someone to possibly watch as well. Ryan Chesley, Sean Behrens, Seamus Casey, all guys uh, to keep an eye on for Team USA. Don't sleep on Team USA if you are Team Canada, but I think to me it's pretty obvious these are the two teams to beat in this tournament with sleepers uh, in my mind uh, being Team Sweden and Team Finland with uh, some really interesting mm -hmm. players coming back as well. Tom, let's turn it over to you on this particular question. Who do you think is a potential dark horse to win the tournament or maybe make some noise in this tournament? Well, I have to go with, um, uh, I have to go with in Pool B, Team that always seems to give USA fits in this tournament, Slovakia. A lot of the, the way Slovakia trains, they have a lot of these guys play together. Now, obviously, Slovakia has some uh, a little more a little more of a heavier talent, a little more heavy talent this year. Believe it or not, obviously Slavkovsky is not going to play. One guy, Adam Sikora, I'm going to talk about later. I'm really curious to see what he does. But Slovakia, they always seem to give the US fits. And Switzerland, to a lesser extent, not maybe not so much anymore, but you have Slovakia there who will be primed to give Finland fits, who will be primed to give the U.S. fits, who maybe, just maybe, will steal a game or two and find themselves in that second spot in the group. I'm not going to go as far to say as they're going to finish number one, but number two, could it happen? Most definitely. Yeah, I think so. Slovakia is also interesting this uh, upcoming tournament because – yeah, they might not have Uri Slavkovsky playing in this tournament, but you know who they do have playing. They might not have the number one overall pick from this past draft playing. They've got the number two overall uh, draft pick from this draft playing in this tournament. Uh, Simon Nemec playing in uh, the World Juniors this year. The Utica Comet, uh, Utica Devils, rather. Well, yeah, Utica Comets, because they are still technically the Comets, uh, have announced that they have loaned Simon Nemec to team slovakia for this tournament so that's going to be a really interesting name to watch spoiler alert for me on that one uh i think he could be a real difference maker on the power play 
for Team Slovakia. He's got a really, really nice shot from the point. He can quarterback a power play very well. He's got a lot. He knows how to slow a game down to his pace and to his team's pace. So having him set the breakout and set the pace of play is going to be a really interesting twist for teams to have to play Team Slovakia with Simon Demek playing possibly 24 minutes a night. So that's going to be something to watch. I think that also gives Team Slovakia a little bit of an edge. Uh, don't sleep on Team Switzerland either, and also don't sleep on Finland. Finland has Brad Lambert coming back for this tournament here. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch for Team Finland too. Um Segways are weird because we're going to talk about now some players that we need to watch in this upcoming tournament. Of course, we have our obvious names here, but let's you know maybe highlight some names that maybe we weren't thinking of. Tom, who are some players to keep an eye out for, either uh, current NHL teams prospects or potential 2023 draft eligible prospects? Well, I mean, you have your two obvious ones now in uh, Connor Bedard and Shane Wright. I mean, uh, what more can you say about them? Um, another one who I'm real curious to see, and this is just my, my Ranger fandom here, Brennan Othman, believe it or not. Um, I don't think he should be here this year. A lot of people think he should be playing in the AHL. Uh, rules prohibit that. Curious to see what he does for Canada. This will probably be it for him. He won't play for them again in the World Juniors. Um, so I'm curious to see what he does. Your captain, your draft pick, Luke Hughes, really curious to see. He's going to ca- be the captain of the U.S. team, and I'm curious to see how he'll lead the team. He'll probably play first first defensive pair units, first power play unit as well. Curious to see how he can lead that team. Um, third guy, and like I had mentioned above, is uh, or read rather before, Adam Sakura. Now, Adam Sakura is an interesting one because Adam Sakura, this is kind of uh, an audition for Canadian junior hockey form. Right now, he's playing over in Slovakia. The Rangers' intentions for him are after this tournament, he's going to move to the WHL. So this will be his first uh, little kick at the can with a little bit of a Canadian junior hockey before he goes over to the WHL to finish out the season. They're so high on him, they want him to finish in Canada. So I'm curious to see what he does for Slovakia and how it will translate to his game once he does go to the WHL. Yeah, so you do have your obvious names, as you mentioned before. Obviously, Shane Wright is somebody that we're going to be keeping an eye on for how his play in the world junior tournament could translate to the NHL game for Seattle uh, for the remainder of this season. Obviously Connor Bedard is the person that absolutely is going to be watched heavily and put under a microscope uh, during this tournament. There's no doubt about that. Um, But you also have some other names that should be mentioned in this tournament as well. I mean, going and looking down it, the team USA you've got a bunch of 2022 draft prospects that uh absolutely won't go unnoticed Logan Cooley Cutter Gauthier oh, I Chaz forgot Michel. about him yeah. Rucker McGrody who you mentioned before who I'm really Rucker curious to watch McGrody, Jimmy yeah. uh, Snuggerud another one that's going to be heavily watched Seamus Casey who was drafted in the second round by the New Jersey Devils as well and having a monster year at the University of Michigan it'll be interesting to see with Seamus Casey how many minutes he ends up getting in the World Junior Tournament there are a few guys ahead of him on the depth chart so he's going to be a name to monitor uh, in this tournament for Devils fans that is um Looking at uh, Team Slovakia, you've got Simon Demek, as I mentioned before, but you also have Philip Massar also playing for them as well in this tournament, which is going to be really, really interesting to watch too. Uh, for Team Sweden, I mentioned their names before, but I should actually uh, mention a few names on their current roster. Uh, Fabian Lysel is one name to keep an eye out for in this particular tournament. Uh, he's a former first-round pick as well. And talking about first-round picks from 2022, what about Jonathan Lekaramaki as well, for uh, who's drafted by Vancouver Canucks, number 15 overall in 2022. Um, Really, really interesting uh, players to watch here. Um, With Switzerland, we mentioned uh, Switzerland being interesting. They've got a six foot five defender and Liam Bischel playing for Mm -hmm. them this tournament, drafted by the Dallas Stars, 18th overall in the 2022 NHL draft. Speaking of defensemen as well, for team, uh, for the Czech Republic team, David Yersek, uh, 16 points in 16 games uh, so far in the AHL with Cleveland this season. Uh, and he made his NHL debut with Columbus in October. He only got a cup of coffee, but uh, yeah, that's all he really needed. Columbus is an absolute dumpster fire at the moment because of all their injuries. And Jerisek doesn't want to add to that list at all, uh, at all. But uh, the last name I did want to mention as uh, somebody to watch 
uh, in this tournament is Adam Fantilli, who we mentioned before that um, Matvey Mitchkov is not going to get really a proper showing in this tournament at all. So Adam Fantilli is absolutely going to take advantage of that. He is currently on some scouts ranks, the number two overall prospect in the 2023 NHL draft. Mitchkov was that number two uh in projections for the past year and a half and he's slowly falling off a little bit which is really interesting to see uh and fantilli is benefiting from that so this tournament could be his coming out party and really kind of show why he should be drafted right after Connor bedard i don't see adam fantilli usurping Connor Connor Bedard for number one overall. Connor Bedard is a potential generational talent on the same level of of the past number of years, Connor McDavid, Austin Matthews, Sidney Crosby, you know, we could have a very special prospect in Connor Bedard. And this could just be another one of those tournaments where he gets to show exactly why that is. Yeah. I know I named a bunch of players here, but yeah, absolutely. A bunch of players to watch and not to uh, undercut this, but yeah, Brennan Ottman is absolutely a player that we should be watching in this tournament too, as Tom mentioned before. And Luke Hughes too, because hey, I'm going to keep being a Devils fan right here. And I'm excited to see what Luke Hughes can do. Captaining Team USA, maybe even captaining them to a gold medal, maybe, possibly, to a, maybe a tournament. Happen. We got to see. Anything can happen. But you guys are going to have to check that out when the World Junior, World Junior Tournament begins. That happens on Boxing Day, December 26th. That's a Monday. And the tournament begins on the NHL Network or wherever you like to illegally pirate all of your NHL games and like <laughs> outside of the U.S. games. I didn't tell you that, though. But um, I'm not sponsored by this. But... Go ahead and watch the World Junior Tournament. It's going to be a ton of fun. It's going to be a cavalcade of awesomeness but let's get back to the nhl game we had some players doing some moving and shaking this week let's talk about some high performance your i-80 sports high performance players of the week all right so we had some players doing quite a bit this week tom who do you want to highlight as your players of the week well, a former one year and dear to me zook matt zuccarello eight points in his last five on a one-line team, but near and dear to me. And then the guy they pretty much replaced Zuccarello with in New York, the bread man, Artemi Panarin, six points in his last five. And he's starting to find the back of the net, Panarin. He scored again tonight. So that's that's a great sign for him as everyone wanted to crucify him in the playoffs this year, crucify him the beginning of the year this year. And I guarantee you there's still some delusional people out there who think Matt Zuccarello is a better player than Artemi Panarin. Don't get me wrong, Zuccarello is a good player. Great player. Maybe the best Norwegian hockey player to ever play the game, but he's not better than Artemi Panarin. Yeah. I love how you had to just jab at the whole, oh, oh he's doing this on a one-line team, by the way. It's a it's a one-line team. <laughs> it is a one-line team until I'm proven otherwise. I that mean, team is going to get eaten alive in the playoffs unless I'm proven otherwise. Unless Kirill Kaprizov breaks his back and, you know, literally drags them over the finish line. Which I happen, said letting Fiala go was going to be a mistake. And believe me, that's going to rear its ugly head. Maybe not right now, but sometime sometime in the next couple of months. Well, for my players of the week, welcome back for this player. Uh, I'm not saying welcome back because he's gone away. I'm saying welcome back for a second week in a row as a player of the week. You know him. You love him. He plays for Winnipeg. He's the best defenseman in the league right now. Josh, Josh Morrissey Morris. on a 10-game point streak right now. 10 points in his last seven games thus far. He is on an absolute heater at the moment. Um, if you want a reason to watch St. Louis hockey at the moment, Jordan Cairo's doing really good hockey things lately. Uh, 10 points in his last five games with six goals to add to that also. He has been very, very good as of late. Um, Edmonton Oilers, look, as easy as it is to constantly just mention, oh, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl. When are we going to mention somebody else? Right now, in fact, because Ryan Nugent Hopkins is actually finding the back of the net at the moment. 11 points in his last seven games, five goals, six assists in that time. And with the same amount of points in less games, we have Willie Nylander of the Toronto Maple Leafs with 11 points in his last six games. So, yeah, a lot of players just making a real impact for their teams right now. Uh, 
honorable mentions also to Kyle Connor of the Winnipeg Jets, 11 points in his last seven games and honorable mention to Nikita Kucherov of the Tampa Bay lightning, 11 points in his last six games. So yeah, I love the fact that I'm actually mentioning some different players this week. It makes me so, so happy. So, so happy. Well, it's time to round out this episode of IED Sports NHL. But before we go, our question of the day is simple as per our theme of today. Tom, I'll let you answer first. Who wins the World Junior Tournament? Canada. Till I'm proven otherwise, Canada. And it might even be better for them. Might even be better for them to have less talent and have to play a little bit harder this time. Well, for me, I'm here to watch the world burn. As much as I want to say Team Canada, USA. You I hope so. I really do. I really hope so. Would be a lot. But of a lot of times, Canada, you look at a roster and it's set up for failure. And I don't know if this one particularly is, even though it's not as stacked as the previous ones. I don't think it's as stacked, but it's still absolutely the team to beat for sure. They've got the target on their back for sure. Um, speaking of guys that could be breaking their back over the finish line for their teams, Connor Bedard could honestly put this team on his back right now at 18 years old, which would be a lot of fun to watch. It would be really, really fun to watch if he does that. But as usual, guys, what do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you disagree with our takes? Let us know in the comment section below. Join the conversation. What do you think about this World Junior Tournament? Who are you interested in watching? What team do you think is going to do well? What team uh, do you think is not going to do so well? Do you agree? Do you disagree with our opinions? Let us know down below. While you're there, hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed already, make sure you subscribe down below and hit the bell notification so that way you know when we go live. If you're joining us here, um, wherever you enjoy your podcast, you can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash I80 sports. And if you're on Twitter, make sure you follow us down below at I80 underscore sports NHL. And if you guys follow us already, thank you guys so much because we greatly value all of your support without you guys. We can't do this on a weekly basis, but guys, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, or Merry Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> or eat, drink, and be merry because it is the season. No, I'm not going to sing again. But, yeah, I know I'm going to enjoy this holiday season. Enjoy it with the ones that you love. Make sure you hug a loved one. Let them know how much they mean to you this time of year. And we'll be back before the end of 22 with one more video with for you guys. But until then, I'm Brian. He's Tom. This has been yet another episode of NHL on I-80 Sports.